we are uh, as strict as a bank can be, you know, on onboarding clients and uh, uh, developing a package of controls to, to make sure that we can uh, uh, comply with the, the requirements. Uh, I mean, if I look at my colleagues, they, they come from, uh, you know, uh, big four, law firms. Uh, they have been working in banks in the past. So we, we all talk regulatory the same language. Um, and basically, we, we have this package of controls theory to comply with the, the regulation. Uh, AML concern, uh, again, very, very often cited as major business risk whenever we talk about crypto, uh, which personally seems to me very disconnected from the reality. Uh, if I just, uh, I would need more than time we have today to explain the, the, the lengthy onboarding process that you have to go through on a regulated crypto exchange. I mean, even my finance department uh, are, are amazed. Um, uh, and you combine that with the, the very strong performance in terms of transaction monitoring abilities that goes way beyond what you can do with cash. And so there is to me kind of a, a disconnection, a perception gap there. Uh, and again, we have two crypto exchange here today, so I would like to get your view, uh, JB first, maybe, and then Rick. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, sure, no, absolutely. I think that there is, there is a perception where, you know, crypto exchange are, are, do not have necessarily, you know, AML controls in place. Uh, but we, we are, you know, we are regulated, we are subject to the same uh, regulatory framework and, uh, you know, AML laws and regulation and directives um, as, as, a, as a bank, for, for instance, <laughs> uh, so, such as, as a bank. So for, for us as, as a crypto exchange, you know, uh, th th there is no difference. You know, we are enhancing on an ongoing basis compliance programs, AML controls. Um, for, for Bitstamp, we have a strong team of 80 individuals working on compliance to serve all of, all, all of our uh, customers in the, in the world. Um, we are, you know, using the same type of software, you know, as, as any other players in the, uh, in the financial sector to do sanction screening or uh, transaction monitoring. Um, so I think that there is a little bit of perception, but uh, uh, really we, we, we are uh, as strict as a bank can be, you know, on onboarding clients and uh, uh, developing a package of controls to, to make sure that we can uh, uh, comply with the, the requirements. Uh, I mean, if I look at my colleagues, they, they come from, uh, you know, uh, big four law firms. Uh, they've been working in banks in the past. So we, we all talk regulatory the same language. Um, and basically, we, we have this package of controls theory to comply with the, the regulation. And I think you're right. There is a misperception. Uh, and every day we try to, to clear it. And when we talk to partners, you know, from the uh, from the financial sector or prospect, I have to say they, they are quite impressed or surprised that, you know, uh, we, we are uh, first as regulated as, uh, as them, but also that uh, uh, our controls are, are very, very strict uh, to comply with the regulation. If I may add something to that point, that was the first objective when we decided in Luxembourg to regulate the platforms that we, the, we, we of course, we didn't uh, decide that from one day to another and we did an assessment and we while doing this assessment, uh, we realized that AML was one of the highest risks, and that was why we decided to go for regulation and, and to put uh, you on the same level play, playing field from that risk perspective. And, and of course, that is really a misperception, and I can confirm that uh, you have the same obligation than any other financial actors with regard to, to AML and KOS. Yeah.